We should be both there. Look at us. Our notes. Oh. Oh, no. I don't want to go live showing notes and stuff. Oh, whatever. <laughs> People will know that we did preparation. <laughs> no. <laughs> ah! No, don't break the Excel oh, sheet. Don't, don't show the sheet yet. All the spoilers. People get to join. All right. So how uh, does life work? <laughs> How well, people can see us right now, and they can probably rewatch this segment. Yes. So don't say anything rude. Now, yeah, from now on, we are beautifully <laughs> clean. clean, totally clean, clean. All those uh, f bombs we dropped just a moment ago. No more. Thank God we weren't streaming. <laughs> How do I get the stream link? Oh, hang on. Ecam should tell me that. If I go to Ecam, I think you're still gonna see the elephant, whatever that is. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, enjoy the elephant while Simon figures out. Okay, we're live. Where do I get the link? There's zero um, person watching, so it's okay, but they'll be able to review. Oh, by the yeah. way, you sh can you see you see the comments in your uh, UI? Um, in no. Testing the comments. Think... Woo! Oh, maybe if I click this thing over here. Yes. Uh, except no, I can't see whatever. Yeah, yes, except no. <laughs> what? No, you should you should be able to see like on the sidebar. It side says bar. comments from live viewers, but it has no comments in there. So if you just added a comment. Oh yeah, but it. I added maybe because from navbar is not a live viewer. Add to right. and let me try something. Look at this. Ooh, that's cool. Okay, so if someone has a question on edge computing, I'll I'll just stomp you. We, we'll turn this into a like interview, um, like a job interview grill of John. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone watching? Send hard questions. Um, Maybe I shouldn't have recommended that you I, um, I, stream this. I'm so tired. I don't right. even. Yes, I'm trying to get found the, the YouTube, YouTube, link. YouTube link. Okay. Found it for you. Sent it to you in Slack. Oh, do I want to open Slack when I... Oh. All How right. <laughs> this is excellent content for anyone that's watching the live stream. This, this, is, is, how you, this is how you do live stream <laughs> professionals. Yeah. This uh, is how the Navbar sausage gets made. John, what's... Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I was, I was looking at it the whole time. Trying. Oh, it's still showing. Mute that. <laughs> All right. So that's the link. I understand what I have to do. Now. I understand the assignment. <laughs> oh, my God. You missed the context, but I slept not many hours. Okay. Let's draft a professional marketing. Uh, <laughs> dear audience. <laughs> dear, well, dear followers. It is my absolute pleasure. No. Ah, hey, John Mayers and I are live right now to talk about the edge. edge. The edge. Well, mostly, John, because I don't know much about it. Lol. <laughs> you can tune in to the live stream. Now tune in to the stream. Stream. Red lollipop. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm also uh, <laughs> crafting a professional message. You just Red can't lolly. see mine. Lollipop. Oh, it's red mine's not going to be red. Oh, it's kind of red. <sighs> I wonder if people are actually going to join us live. If you are joining Hurry. us live and you've already just watched through all of this uh, preparation stuff, this is basically what it is like for uh, a live... Well, not a live. This is what it's like when we're recording a Navbar episode. Um, it it seems nice and polished and... <laughs> <laughs> like perfection, but uh, there's should a I, lot of... Should I word it like, have you seen James Quick's uh, 
message where the guy was like, you are... Yeah. <laughs> your <laughs> time... some rough comments you on his YouTube videos. have time left. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't see I that. need... I'm going... <laughs> That's what it said. All right, I am Simon, you haven't had enough sleep to be uh, writing these messages. <laughs> <laughs> All right. James will know if Tune into the stream. Click tweet. Let's do this. We good? We good? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Are we good, man? Uh, let me change first the uh, us two. Oh, just you. It can be just you. Oh, oh, <laughs> what? There was a thumb. What happened? I saw a thumb up fly. Uh, oh, my God. Whatever. Bang! Uh, are people actually watching? Is any Has anyone joined? Or you've, ju you've just... Let me check. Uh, yes. No, there's one thumb up. Hello, Cody. Cody's there. How did you find the awesome. link, Cody? Uh, I think we... I, I tweeted just before ah, you, you did. You were quicker than me. There you go. Yeah. Um, what do we do? How I had does enough this work? sleep to have those those speed tweets going. Before we start, we need to introduce the... I'm Simon. This is uh, John. This is both of us. And uh, there's a surprise at the end, but I can't wait. So, ah, what is this? Oh, my God. It's Puppy Watch. Puppy I mean, watch. I don't know what that is. Now you have to watch till the end if you want to see more of that. Although I might, <laughs> I might, I might show it a few times more. Yeah, if, um, I, if if me talking about edge computing gets boring, just feel free to switch to Puppy Cam, and yeah. it's what the viewers really want. Hi Cody, hi Philip, thanks for joining us. This is yeah the first time we've live streamed out this uh, <laughs> this link, so we'll see uh, we'll see if this puts on too much pressure for us to get the episode finished properly. But yeah. you get to see you get to see all the behind the scenes of how long it takes us to get started recording an episode. <laughs> hey, puppy. Oh. Oh. Cute. Uh, all right. I Should we do notes. this? I need notes. I'm not prepared. Sorry. Um, Cody, I'm... are you ready? Philip, are you ready? Everyone ready to hit the big red button? Okay, I mean, the red button has been hit. <laughs> oh, no, we need to Oh, actually... wait, we're live? Wait, this is streaming? Uh-oh. <laughs> Let me check before we actually... Uh, I'm going to record my audio there. You can't see it, but I I'm recording my own audio. Oh, yeah. I'm recording my good quality screen flow, although now I guess it probably has like 40 minutes of <laughs> unusable... It's all right. Uh, so what is 50 gigs? <laughs> what is 50 yeah. gigs of storage? It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, if my computer crashes before we get to the end of this episode, that's the uh, very long 4K video that I recorded unnecessarily. Yeah. So pro tip for those watching live, we have a, a pre-flight check list. Check list. It includes oh, yeah, the checklist. recording our audios because you never know if the live stream works, but we haven't recorded or recorded the wrong mic source. Uh, that would be a bummer. Can you hear me? Do I sound nice? Do I sound like I'm supposed to? You sound, to? yeah. You okay. sound exactly like you're supposed to. I'm not recording from like, like the, the iPad uh, version one <laughs> edition. I, one still have, I still have nightmares from that live stream that I did. It was like, yeah, it was a month or a couple of months ago. But yeah, the uh, I was on mute for, for 20 minutes and it still haunts me. So... I'm glad that I get to do these uh, nav the bar episodes with you, so that and the pl the pre flight check um, to make sure that everything is actually working. My lights look good. I've started recording in stream screen flow. We've actually tweeted out the link this time, which I think is the first time we can tick that tick that tick box. I think we I'm filled just up our the, waters. It's just gonna be the DJ today, putting some tunes to your you talking. <laughs> um, yeah, check lights. Drink water. We're good at this. All right. Take a sip of water. This is the most important step of the process. Mm -hmm. We've even managed to, like, synchronize our drinkings of waters, um, as you could see just there. And so, yeah, we used to clap to try and keep everything in sync, but now we just take a big sip of water to, to keep everything in sync. <laughs> the gulp? <laughs> it's, it's way more accurate. Yeah, that's right. All right, in my in right. list, there's fill up water, take a sip of water, start streaming immediately before intro. Like we've done all this. Uh, I have to record Ecamm and Roadcaster. I'm doing this. Check lights. Too many lights. Fill up water. Share another tweet. I've done that. Sip of water. We are ready. We're ready to go. No, right. yes. I just go back to my notes. So this is professional uh, 
that's the difference between the, the back end and front end of a, a podcast. If you want, you see the polished <laughs> output in uh, Spotify or wherever you listen, but this is what the the storage room with all the boxes and the trolleys and the, the stuff inventory right. happening. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> you ready to go, Simon? I turned off the heater. Yes, I am ready. Uh, remind right. me uh, to check this. Oh, I can't. Oh, uh, almost started a word with the letter F. I cannot do this. I'm going to have to look at this one every 10 minutes. Oh, puppy cam. Puppy Very cam. Lovely. Uh yeah, we have to we we have to keep it clean. We have to try and keep Oh wait. Do we have to keep it clean? Yes. I guess we can swear on YouTube. We probably shouldn't. Though. We should avoid it. But yeah, I think the, yeah. the important part is making sure the podcast goes out nice and clean and you put those duck sounds over any time. I swear. <laughs> uh, I agree with Cody. This is where the real art happens in the <laughs> yeah, back office. Right. The in preparation the... of the stream rather than uh, the actual content that comes out the other side. This is All so right. good. This comment thing. I'm going to like, if you have questions, hard question to stump us. <laughs> when I oh, say yeah. us, I mean, <laughs> wait, which one? <laughs> us as yeah, in John. Yeah, this this guy. Uh, yeah, if you if you have any questions while we're, while we're streaming, I guess this, yeah, this now is an option for people to jump in yeah. with questions that we can answer live uh, while we're, yeah. Yeah, it's worth mentioning while that's we're recording the, the first, episode. Uh, first live episode, live recording. Uh, it's still the podcast. The output is the same, but it's the first time we actually had the guts to to tweet the link. Uh, yeah. And if I look, where do I see how many participants are in this thing? I don't know. Uh, who cares? What well, I care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what I was going to say is uh, we're not going to do that today because logistics, but we can have up to an extra three more people so we can be five uh, on the screen. So if one day there's like someone who's got a really good question and feels comfortable enough jumping on, we could. <laughs> That's down the road. We should do like more. Like, sounds uh, like too much overhead, Simon. You're thinking thinking too big. <laughs> no, Ecamm Live, I just, no, I'm not going to do it here, but I could say, hey, let's add one more. Oh, it's locked. Uh, look, I'm going to regret this decision immediately, but I could say, let's bring uh, Cody. Bam, and you would appear here. Awesome. And then uh, boot him out again. But we're yeah. not going to. Yes, because we need to do mic check and stuff. So, Simon, stop rambling. <laughs> All right, take the, the comment off the screen. We're jumping into it. We're recording an episode. All right, let's do this. Yes, sir. Welcome to the Navbar, a podcast where we help you navigate the web and raise the bar of your content creation. My name is John Myers. I'm a developer advocate from Superbase. And I am Simon Vrashley Otis. I am a designer developer, content creator, and currently full-time puppy caretaker from Sydney, Australia. Awesome. What are we doing in this episode, Simon? What are we doing? Good question. So, in this episode, we're going to talk about the edge. Uh, what it is, where it is, where is the edge, and why we need it. This is a very exciting topic that I have gone quite deep on recently. Uh, I've been working on a new uh, Egghead course, which will be coming out soon. And so I'm very keen to share all of the other stuff that I've learned along the way. So let's get into it. Nice. Uh, okay, John, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I need to uh, level up here. I know next to nothing about edge computing. Uh, so I'm hoping to learn a lot today. And maybe I can try to give you my uh, definition that lives in my head because I've heard about edge computing all the time. I see it everywhere. And I'm going to give you the, the picture that I think it is. And then you can tell me how wrong I am or how kind of close and get into more details. Awesome. How did that, that sound? Sounds, that sounds fantastic. That's, that's a great idea. Simon, what is edge computing in your opinion? Job interview question. So yeah. what I'm going to say is uh, I think what it is, it kind of is like a CDN. So CDN is Content Delivery Network, but it's only for static files like, like a JavaScript file or an image. And basically, it serves that file as close as possible to the, the user. So if someone's from Australia, it's going to try to look for the, the Pacific or Sydney uh, data center if there's one. But this is only for front-end assets, kind of static assets that are cached and you just consume. And I think your edge computing brings that technology, but for more server stuff, server side. So you can execute code. You can maybe fetch some data and do some interesting backend stuff rather than just served uh, 
static file. So it brings the CDN approach to the rest of the stack. So now you can not only have just your images and CSS files served really rapidly, but the entire application. Kind of makes that sense. That is a perfect explanation. There's no point in recording the rest of the episode. You nailed it. We All did right, it. thanks for listening, and we will see you <laughs> next week. <laughs> But maybe oh, we could go into a little bit more detail as to sure. as to how we got to that point um, and talk through some different iterations of uh, of data fetching and so yep. I guess like the history of 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 how web development has evolved. Um, so the first iteration of this is the kind of client server architecture. So this is where you have um, a client that's somewhere in the world and they make a request to a single server that lives in one location, one origin, um, and that might have a database maybe running on the same server. Um, and no matter where they are in the world, they're just going to that that one origin. So if they are in Australia, for example, mm-hmm. um, then they basically just need to wait for the for the request to go to the other side of the world and then maybe go to the database to get some uh, the actual data that they need uh, and then send that big blob of JSON back all the way across the world again. Um, and so this might not be as big a problem or as noticeable if you're if you're in the US or somewhere close to, to the US West or US <laughs> East um, data centers um, of, of Amazon and where most of the internet is. Uh, but if you are building something that you want to be used worldwide, then you probably want it to be equally performant worldwide. You probably don't want to, um, you know, exclude people who are outside of that uh, that region. Uh, by making them wait a super, super long time to get that data. By and outside sure of that region, John means both of us. We It's always us in Australia. We we wait. <laughs> That's right. And so maybe this is the reason I'm like so passionate about this topic is like <laughs> I'm one of the people that actually has to experience this problem when there aren't. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. doing the, the thing that's called dog fooding where you, you actually – you actually consume the the problem and the product yourself to experience the pain points and then you you best place to solve them or wants to solve them that's right yeah so then the next iteration i guess of um of of this this world of of addressing this problem is something that you just talked about where you have static assets um in cdn nodes so cdn nodes are like um little uh servers that are distributed all across the world. Um, and so we can put static files on those servers and then serve them to our users um, really, really quickly. And so this is where like Gatsby and Next uh, really blew up and had um, were, were kind of trying to sell the idea of pre-rendering or generating static assets at build time. So uh, yeah. basically when you create a new version of your application, that's when you go and make a request for fresh data from the database. And then you create these static assets and then they are distributed uh, to servers all across the world. So then uh, this helps to address that problem where a client who might be in Australia or in Indonesia or in uh, Africa or anywhere else that's not North America. Um, not US East. <laughs> yeah, not not US East. Uh, they get that um, that static page or that um, that HTML document from the closest possible server, and so this helps to uh, improve performance because they're, they're, it needs to travel um, not nearly as far. It needs to travel travel a very very short distance. Um, but these are usually referred to as like dumb servers. So uh, they can kind of only serve up that static content. And so anything that requires uh, anything dynamic or any live data still needs like a smart, more complex server um, to go back to usually that single origin database again. Um, and so you kind of, you're, you're losing that, uh, that benefit of just having static assets everywhere if you need to then go and fetch fresh content from a single origin database. Um, yep. So this is also when CDNs started to become a little bit more hip and 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 got rebranded as the edge, uh, and people started to uh, to use that term, which sounds way cooler than right. CDN. Right. So CDNs are part of the edge. You're saying? Yeah, that's right. So okay. I, I guess they're uh, synonymous. At least, I, yeah, yeah. I, I believe they're synonymous. So you can you can refer to the edge. Or you can refer to a collection of, of CDN. Yeah, it's nodes. like a nest, nested hierarchy. Okay, I thought CDN was like front ends or static stuff, and then the edge was the other one, but the edge kind of includes the CDN parts of the equation. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so um, I guess like edge computing is the next evolution of what CDNs yeah, okay, can right. do. So this is taking those um, those dumb servers and making them a little bit smarter. Um, and so we're definitely not making them sentient. Uh, we're not making them that smart, but just a little bit smarter. We haven't given them feelings yet, which is uh, probably a good thing. Anyway, uh, this allows robots. us... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, this allows us to run some... Uh, some chunks of server-side logic. So this is also what you were alluding to. Um, so we can have what's usually uh, commonly referred to as like serverless functions. So this is little chunks of server-side logic that can do the things that only servers are really allowed to do. Um, so things like checking auth or maybe talking to a database, um, all of those kinds of like um, things that you don't want the client to have direct access to. Um, we can now uh, run those simple tasks at the edge. Does that right. make sense? It does make sense. Yeah, it makes it uh, much clearer than what I had uh, in my mind. It's going well so far. You've got to jump in on the next the next question. I'm gonna jump in on the next question. <laughs> I was I was trying to get the sidebar, <laughs> remove the sidebar uh, that's blocking half of my notes. All right, so this is when you live stream, there's little bits where we kind of regather ourselves and then we kind of go back to recording mode, which makes... Uh, and we have another sip of water. <laughs> yes. We stay hydrated. It's very Synchronized. important. Yeah, it kind of helps. Uh, doing this helps doing the... Well, John does all the editing of the actual podcast, but it helps doing a clean cut rather than just keep going and then you have to try to figure out... Um, we should do like a dinosaur scream every time just before just before <laughs> starting so you, you can see the waveform. Yeah, we'll get like a, a really obnoxious, really loud air horn. Actually, you have an air horn on your... <laughs> it's, well, I'm going to press. It's probably not the right one. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we yeah. mess up a take, yeah. Womp, yeah. womp, womp. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, side note, because we live, I, I remember Scott Tolinsky uh, mentioning that he's to make his edit cuts or like just simplify the the recording process he, he was doing like the most obnoxious scream sound that you can think of and then just cut like this is it means it's a new take and then somehow i forgot the context but in in one project he left one of these so the person was <laughs> watching the polished video and at some point there's this like <laughs> scream going off <laughs> And they uh, reached out to Scott like, do you know there's that weird scream at like the seven minute mark? <laughs> so I guess uh, that's, that's the risk. That's my nightmares. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to like, um, <laughs> yeah, like mess up a take and then like swear or, can, <laughs> you know, say something very frustrated and then be like, ooh, I really got to make sure that those don't end up in the final in the final version. It makes you really good at editing, though, if you know that there are all of these like these things that definitely can't end up in the final video spread out throughout the um, the unedited raw footage, then you definitely make sure that you edit them out. Yep. All right, let's jump back into it. Um, bu 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 okay, so we are at the... Uh, what's the catch here? Uh, that sounds pretty simple. So what a different option. Wait, what? Yeah, no, sorry, you're right. What am I talking about? Yes. You, yes. You got this. All right, so I'm going to read my notes and pretend it's uh, organic. And, no, it is authentic, but we kind of give each other little hints to, to nudge it up. All right, you ready, John? I'm ready. Nice. So, yeah, that sounds perfect. Now we have our sites hosted close to our users. We have serverless functions running close to our users. So what's the catch? It seems like a dream. Yeah, so as I just mentioned there, we need to talk to a database. And so we're back in that same problem we had earlier where the database is probably hosted in a single location. And so while our serverless functions are running really, really close to the user, um, we still need to wait for that serverless function to then go and talk to that database, which might be in US East or West or whatever. Um, and so this brings us to, I guess, the current state of edge computing. And one of the big problems that I think a lot of companies are trying to solve is how do you either reduce the number of trips that you need to make to the database or how do you replicate the database or a read version of the database across a whole bunch of CDN nodes and how do you keep everything in sync um, is obviously a very, very complicated problem. So there are a few options for this, but I guess the, the big idea is so that it doesn't get too scary or overwhelming is that all we're talking about um, 
really in, in, in solving this problem is caching, which is just mm -hmm. remembering a value, and then cache busting, which is just forgetting that value. So maybe once the database has, has been updated and the value has changed, um, the value that you have stored in the cache is no longer correct. And so we want to forget that value and then remember a new value or the, the correct version of that data. Yep. That makes sense to me. So sounds, in theory, pretty simple. Um, what are some different options that you have for this caching? Yeah, so at, at I guess, the, the foundational level, you have browser caching. Um, and so the browser itself has um, some uh, caching capabilities where it can just store and remember a value. Um, so you can set these using cache control headers. Um, there is a very helpful MDN article which you can check out, which I'll make sure is in the... Uh, the show notes um, and values can also be cached at the CDN. And so like, that's what those static assets were. It was essentially yep. just caching um, a, a static version of your, of your page. Um, and so one, one way to kind of manage that, um, making sure that the, the assets don't become stale or making sure that you can kind of um, forget the, the stuff that uh, is no longer accurate is by um, using a unique hash uh, for each version of your application. So every time you publish a new version of your application, you might like append on a hash to um, all of the CSS files that you're including or all of the JavaScript files, um, any of those assets that you're using for that version of your application, um, which works well for assets, um, but it doesn't, doesn't work so well when you're making API requests for, for different uh, blobs of data um, for different pages on your application. So... Uh, for something like this, you might want to look at an in-memory cache. Um, so Redis is a good example of this. Um, so this is where you have a hosted service that caches things in the middle. So basically, you request data from uh, Redis instead of going straight to your API or straight to your database. And then yep. Redis passes on that request, gets the data, um, and then just remembers the value that it sent back as a response. Um, so it's just a little um, yeah, in-memory cache that if you then request the data again, it will go, oh, I've already got that in uh, in memory. I remember that value. I've already asked for it from the database. So here's the cached version. Um, the problem is like this, this helps a lot with performance, uh, but the problem is that it requires you to manage yet another service. Mm -hmm. um, so since you have these functions, these serverless functions already running at the edge, um, and then those might be the things that are going off to, to Redis to ask for the data. Um, wouldn't it be great if you could just remember the value in that serverless function rather than needing to spin up yet another service to be able to handle this? That would be great. Well, ah. I've, got <laughs> I've got something for you then, Simon. Some edge providers... Uh, like Cloudflare, do just this. And so in Cloudflare Workers, which is their uh, like serverless functions at the edge offering, you get access to a few different caching options. And they all have slightly different use cases. Uh, but one of those is KV storage. And this is what I use in my new Egghead course. Um, and this allows us to remember a value in a special cache that is also distributed across multiple CDN nodes. So our Cloudflare Workers are running at the edge. Um, and now we have a special cache, which is also remembering values at the edge. Um, and so right. not only that, but they handle all of the complicated like propagation of changes um, if, any of, if any of those caches are updated. So imagine you update like a user's name at one of those locations. Um, that yeah. is now only in that one CDN node. Um, mm -hmm. And so you would need to work out some pretty complicated uh, cache busting uh, logic and and uh, write a whole bunch of custom confusing stuff to then tell all of the other nodes Broadcast. that they need to. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in in the case with uh, Cloudflare Workers and KV Storage, um, they handle that propagation. And so um, it will automatically start updating each of those nodes um, until all of the... Uh, all of the KV stores at all of the CDN nodes are up to date again. That's amazing. Um, it is yeah. well known that uh, uh, cache invalidation is one of the hardest problems uh, in computer science with naming things. You always hear this, like the, the two hardest things, naming stuff and in uh, like busting the cache. But, and uh, a random question, is it cache or cache? Like I've been saying both oh, interchangeably. Yeah. I, I usually wait for someone else to talk and then I just use just, the, the yeah, same version. That... 
but and yeah, I, cash cash is what I say. But I think the I think the correct one is actually cash, cash. Um, which refers to like um, like the actual word cash means you know like a a thing, like a. I don't know, a treasure box in the ground yeah. or something. Well, in French, a, cash, caché means hide. So I, I, like it's like a little something you, you hide the value. I, I, I don't know. I thought, I, so okay. I've been saying cash, but then I hear people saying cash at everywhere I go. So well, cash, maybe we the, should cash just... the data or cache the data. You can, you can yeah. choose. Uh, yeah, yeah, data and data is another <laughs> one that I always just wait for someone else to say it and then just say it however they're saying it. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe I should split the difference and just call it cache from now on. That's, that sounds much fancier. Cache. Like well, cache is the action. Cache is like what, what we don't want to go in there. I think I know. I have the idea. We should have a, a prettier config for s how you say words, and then you just have a a prettier RC or some some oh, sort of like spoken language uh, config, and then we don't have to think about it. We just like auto say it like everyone in yeah. in the context of that discussion. Like GIF and GIF as well. We'll have nothing to argue about on the internet anymore. What will That's we do? True, yeah. <laughs> that would remove a lot of the. <laughs> The spiciness of discussions. Yeah. Just like so pretty back to our <laughs> Back to our edge topic. Um, so, yeah, as, as you were just saying, cache busting is a very, very complicated thing. Or caching itself, just the idea of caching and when yeah. to revalidate things, when to, to forget those values, when to refresh them. That is a super complicated uh, topic in computer science. So the cool thing about... Um, pairing Cloudflare Workers, KV Storage, and something like Superbase is that you can use database webhooks to subscribe to changes in the database and automatically update the cache at all of those CDN nodes with fresh data. So uh, basically, anytime you change anything in your Superbase database, um, it can automatically tell one of those CDN nodes, here's a new value, update your cache, and then yeah. because of the way that KV storage works, it will then continue to propagate that cache all the way around the CDN nodes until that new fresh value is distributed worldwide. So this okay. essentially means that you get all of those benefits of cached data, um, of, of having that cached data as close as possible to your users without having to compromise with just having stale data that you only refresh, um, you know, like on a cron job. Yeah. Uh, based time frame or something like that. So do you have something like uncreated or unupdated like hooks? Into, yes. Yeah. So every time exactly, there's a yeah. CRUD operation happening, you can you can intercept that and say, hey, or just just before update or after update or on update yeah, successful. So yeah. Exactly. So when we're uh, basically we subscribe to um, to like Postgres data events um, and so or, or change events. So. Um, basically insert, update, or delete. So you select a particular table that you want to listen to, and then you select the particular action or event that you want to listen to, um, and then this can yep. call um, a, an API that um, is you know, hosted on the internet, so like a Cloudflare worker that's responsible for um, refreshing that value. And so that's exactly why you should take my brand new entirely free egghead <laughs> course on caching Superbase data at the edge with Cloudflare workers and KV storage. Uh, in fact, you could even probably do it. I don't know how long the edited version of this will be, but you can probably learn how to implement this in less time than it's taken me to explain it right now. Uh, Cause the course is only, I think 28 minutes. So, uh, the course is not quite live yet, but if you subscribe to my weekly newsletter at johnmyers.io slash subscribe slash newsletter, uh, I will be sending out exclusive early access in the next, probably in the next couple of days. So that's the big thing that I have been working on for many, many months. Uh, what have you been up to, Simon? I have been working uh, for months now on this Pro Tailwind uh, course, it's an online course that has multiple modules and each of these modules are actually self-paced workshops. So the idea is like, imagine attending a real workshop with me uh, on Zoom or in person and imagine like a day worth of challenges or like little activities, not just watch a video and then watch another video and then you think, okay, I've, I've, I've watched this, therefore I mastered the skill of Tailwind and all the things we learn. Instead, it's more of a hands-on approach. So there's a bit of theory or like a lecture of show and tell. And then, okay, here's the challenge. And you've got 15 minutes or whatever. If you self-pace yourself, you have whatever time you want to kind of try to complete the challenge. And then the next video is kind of like a walkthrough of how I would implement that. And then we can kind of discuss the trade-off. And one thing I really like about the approach of building these course is to validate the quality of the materials. We actually 
deliver real workshops before doing any video recordings. So we want to, to make sure that people that actually paid paid customers will give you a real feedback rather if you just ask eight friends to watch a workshop, everyone's going to say, yeah, that was great, awesome, well done. But if you have paid customers, they're more likely to give you true feedback because they have some horses in the, in the race, I guess. So for sure. I'm going to teach workshops for each of these four modules. And if you're watching live, we are Wednesday uh, about lunchtime here in Australia. And Friday morning at six o'clock, bright and early, so in about less than a hundred hours now, I guess, uh, I'm going to teach Ooh. my first workshop. Uh, it's interesting because it's kind of like the reverse approach. So we build in this workshop, in, in the course, the whole course, we build a whole uh, calendar booking app, kind of like Calendly or some sort of app like this. And then we use this as the the core uh, app to add things like multiple themes, color themes, uh, which is somewhat tricky to do with Tailwind. And we create reusable components and then we start sharing this component across multiple apps. Uh, so you start thinking about uh, component library and publishing and NPM packages and monorepos. So we go through a lot of interesting stuff. But this workshop I'm teaching in two days is kind of like the more like CSS, fun, gymnastics, uh, uh, cool little uh, interesting parts of the UI because the UI is actually looking really good. But then the content of the, the, the course is like on advanced topics, like how to share components and reuse and stuff. And there's all these nice things like decorative ribbons and shadows and animations. And I've decided to make a workshop for those interested in these like advanced CSS patterns. Uh, not necessarily something that's going to promote you to senior engineer like data architect, but more uh, really refine your UIs to take it to the next level of, of delight and customer experience by just adding some polish. And so we have these little challenges where there's a starting point and an end point and a Figma file. And I give you some tips and then I send you on your own in a little group to try work on this workshop. And I drop feed some drip feed, some little tips as the, the time is ticking. And then we look at the solutions together. So I'm super excited. It's gonna be on Zoom four hours Friday morning. And uh, this is month of work in the making coming into the first workshop that's going to lead to a series of more workshops. So super excited. Awesome. Yeah, I am super excited as well. And if you have been watching uh, any of, of Simon's socials, you would have seen that he has been playing with all kinds of fun layout stuff and interactive things to uh, to make the course not just a boring, like you're oh, yeah. just watching something that you could have just, like a video that you could have just watched another time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Seeing all the cool <clears throat> interactive stuff that you've built is awesome. And, yeah, and that's something I'm really proud of. There's, there's enough uh, content for three or four days of workshops. So there's like six, eight challenges, and we probably will only do two, maybe three in the in the actual workshop because I want to, it being the opportunity, like the difference between watching videos or being live with me is that you have access to, to ask questions and compare solutions and say, hey, why did you use grid instead of flexbox here or stuff like this? And I'd much rather be able to uh, nerd out on a deep on a topic with the, the group rather than say, all right, we have six challenges, we have seven minutes per each, and just let's go and push out <laughs> so we can do them. So I think, uh, I don't know exactly where the workshop's gonna go. We, I know which one I start with, and then from there, I can see the level of interest and the CSS skills and choose which one I think is appropriate for the next challenge. And yeah, it's gonna be fun and open-ended, and I think it has great value. Awesome, yeah, I can't wait for that. Uh, should we officially open the bar? Should we move into our open nav bar section. <laughs> well, now we have officially bite. entered the nav bar <laughs> open bar. Yeah. So speaking of um, having drinks, uh, what have you been spending all of your time doing or helping other people do? In this house, a lot of uh, milk is being drunk at the moment. <laughs> A lot of puppy milk. So if you follow me on Twitter, you've been already brainwashed into my my world, which is uh, surrounded by little puppies. So I owned a male and a female corgi for a couple of years. Well, the, the female was like six year old, but the male is like just under two years. And together uh, they had little puppies uh, that were born on exactly one week ago, which John, I believe was your birthday. So they were born on your birthday. So when, when, when is it arriving? When's my puppy arriving? 
And it's still it's still getting packaged and prepared <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the uh, the thing I didn't know because I grew up with cats and kittens. I had lots of kittens birth and the mother cats just all you do is prepare a box. You put a cardboard box and put some blankets and then just like a safe spot and you show yeah that's you can go there. And then that's it. Like she's gonna handle absolutely everything. I'm sure every now and then there's some complications, but um, I had four times little kittens and everything went completely smoothly every time. This is my first puppy experience, and I assume yeah, you just prepare a cardboard box and stuff. We were prepared. We've done some research, but one thing I did not know is there's actually on big uh, more than five six puppy litters, uh, there's about a seventy percent survival rate. So which means you almost lose one third of the puppies and it's like the, the average numbers. And so we had puppies, there were nine, uh, but the last one was unfortunately born already dead. And already I was like, oh my God, what's, what's, what have I done wrong? Uh, the answer is nothing apparently, but... And then two of them were what's called little runts. So runts is like the, usually the last ones to come out and they're significantly smaller in size. And the, the first couple of days, especially the first hours, are critical for all the puppies to drink as much milk as they can to kind of start building the immune system and growing into a stomach that can eat more milk to continue growing, I guess. And typically the little runs uh, are getting a bit pushed off because they're smaller and uh, it's like the Wild West out there. There's The mom is lying on the side and there's a few little uh, peeps to choose from and uh, everyone's just like pushing each other out of the way and the... You can see like the, the, how is it called? Like the survival or the nature's selection, <laughs> like the strongest uh, uh, survive and the weakest get pushed off. So what happened is a second one unfortunately died after one day. And then you can hear maybe little sounds and if I switch camera for a second, there's a third one that was uh, completely destined to uh, not make it. So what happens is this one, little Nala she's called, the kids called her Nala. Um, she stopped drinking milk and even with the bottle, we would give her the bottle and she would just not have enough energy to, to drink and swallow. So we couldn't put milk in her. And obviously if you don't feed it and it's already weak and small, uh, it's not going to go well. And I went to the vet, uh, on Monday morning. So it's like two days ago and they tried to prep me up. They were like, look, uh, this, uh, is looking like a classic case of what's called puppy fading syndrome. So they just fade out and stop stop having energy and just fade until they die. And she said, if you're comfortable with it, uh, the last thing you can try if she doesn't drink is to force feed her by skipping the whole swallowing thing and by going straight uh, with a little tube into the little belly here. And so I was like, look, I'm I'm willing to try that, whatever that takes. And she gave me this little tube. So now every two hours... Since you see her and she's moving here, it successfully worked. So I feed her every two hours um, about a ridiculously small amount, like seven milliliters of milk through a little tube. So you just have to go through the mouth all the way to down there and then squeeze slowly. And it's it's been incredible. Like it's the I did the first one thinking either I'm going to choke her because it's going to go in the lungs or whatever. And I did it and she immediately lifted her head up and started moving like this. And I was like, Oh my god, <laughs> it's actually working. And so it's amazing. That explains a lot of me being a bit um sloppy today. <laughs> <laughs> uh like forgetting that I have to read the, be prepared for the question and the follow up is uh the feeding happens every uh two where are we here? Every two hours. And that's, that's cool. two during, hours during, around the clock. That's not yes, just that's, every that's two hours thing. while you're usually awake. <laughs> so during the workday is actually nice. It's kind of like Pomodoro, Pomodoro technique where you like work uh, an hour and a half and then take 15 minutes break to heat. You have to warm the milk up and prepare it and make sure everything's clean and then do the thing. And that's cool. And I actually started to really enjoy that because I, I tend to sometimes work for from nine to five nonstop and not even go to the bathroom once, not drink water, not, I'm just like working machine, editing a video for a whole day. And so that's that kind of forces me to take regular breaks and get up. But the thing continues at night and this is where it's super tricky. So my wife mm -hmm. and I take turns, but even like doing every two hour means like if, if you want to have a 
eight hours sleep, it means, well, you don't, <laughs> no one gets an eight hour sleep, <laughs> but in an eight hour night that we, you would usually get, there's four uh, increments of feeding that thing that takes about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, so usually I stay up and I do 11.30 and 1.30 in the morning and then I sleep and my wife gets up at 3.30 and we kind of taper it off. And every now and then, uh, it's a bit more complicated. Like my wife couldn't do this morning, so I actually did uh, 11. And then I, the last one I did was like uh, almost uh, like half past two. I went back to bed at three and I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> it's going to be rough. Yeah. yeah but it's I'm like gonna... having a brand new like baby all over again. It's like having it is literally, a newborn. literally like having a child. And as you can imagine, if you like, I've been since probably at least... Uh, Last Friday, when she was three days old, I've, I've been nonstop uh, with her by my side and caring for her and stuff. And you can imagine like the bond that kind of it creates. And so like now I'm like, I, I'm still prepared that uh, like the vet said, there's a high chance that she doesn't make, even if she looks better, like she might just one day says her body said, no, actually, no, nah, I'm not going <laughs> to continue growing. And but yeah, uh, uh, it's it's I didn't think you could get attached to a little thing like this within less than a week. Um but it's been pretty cool. Yeah. She's uh, she's uh, keeping us on our toes, literally, and yeah, watch, watching uh, how much of an impact you can have with a bit of uh, kindness and careness. Uh, it's amazing. And I want to say one more thing: the the mom kind of instinctively starting dismiss. She was like, she's not making it, so I may as well focus on the other six. You could literally see the mom like flicker her flicker off with the back leg like yeah she just you not, don't even try it's not worth it let, let the milk for the ones that can make it wow, and so that's... when the when the mom kind of like kind of bails out you're like okay this, we're gonna need to do something ourselves yeah and uh that's... yeah so what what i was saying is like now uh i have her by my side because she needs care but when i put her with the mom the mom is like dropping everyone else and like looking for her and trying to give her milk and licking her everywhere so she's She's noticed. Oh, there's a. It's it's actually worth my time. So um, that makes me hopeful. Yeah. Wow. That is incredible. Ooh. Yeah. I feel like I'm attached just watching from a distance. <laughs> you know what? A lot of people reached out because I I shared on Twitter and first I was like, I'm doing my workshop on Friday. I should just focus on marketing the course and the workshop. And then I was like, Nah. <laughs> you know what? I'm a human, and the humans are gonna be human. And so yeah. many people reached out. Say, man, I just. I just log in on Twitter and hope to see an update and I'm rooting for her and stuff. And yeah, it's been, it's been nice, like a lot of uh, support. And yes, yeah. going, it's going well so far. And uh, I don't want to discourage anyone from getting puppies, but I think it makes sense to know that it's not a smooth ride. And like everyone I talk to say, yeah, we had puppies and then we thought we were terrible owners because a couple of them died. But it's just, they do a lot of them hoping there's enough that kind of... <laughs> that kind of yeah. grow up to continue the dog race. Yeah, that is uh yeah, a wild roller coaster. <laughs> yes. Well, what, what about I've you? What's happening in your this, world? <laughs> How many puppies uh, have you got? <laughs> yeah, it's it's not nearly as uh, as emotional or um as as amazing as that. Uh all I've been doing is battling with teleprompters. So, we did a <laughs> I love we the transition. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> we did an episode uh, of of the Nazbar podcast, um, or the, I think the last two episodes were us talking about all of the gear, the ridiculous gear that we have, the yeah crazy amount of stuff that um, that we've accumulated over time. And yeah. Simon was talking about a teleprompter, and it got me very very <laughs> envious. I'm looking at of, it right uh, now. Yeah. Yeah, and as you can see, I'm still not looking into it, even though yeah, I have I'll talk now. to you like this, John, as well. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, people listening to the audio stream have no idea, but Simon is uh, looking off to the side as I'm looking off to the side. Um, but yeah, I, I, I decided that um, like one of the big problems that I have um, when... Uh, trying to record like the intro of a video is I need to kind of weigh up like do I spend a whole bunch of time on this and try and get a perfect take from memory so do I do yep. I kind of remember what I'm trying to say and then try and nail all of it um, or do I just have like a script off to the side and you know noticeably look at the script um, every now and again to kind of prompt what I need to talk about for that 
paragraph or whatever. Um, and it's kind of like weighing up these two things because um, like if I have enough time, then I'll put a whole bunch of effort into making it, you know, super high quality. But if it's something that's, um, you know, got an intense deadline, like maybe uh, a special super base launch week that might be happening right now, um, there's, you know, much smaller time frames to, to get that done. And so then, yeah. uh, you know, I end up feeling like I'm compromising the quality of the video, um, especially the intro, which is like the first thing that people see, um, compromising the quality of that by just kind of needing to look off screen to to read a script. So I finally, uh, after all of your um, convincing that you've done about how awesome teleprompters are and how um, easy it is to just convert an iPad into being a, a teleprompter device, I, I bought a teleprompter and then went and found an old iPad that I had from a long time ago that hasn't been used for anything. It's an iPad 2. Um, and spends just so long trying to get it working. So I went through so many iterations of, of trying to get a very old Apple device to work uh, when Apple really doesn't want you to have old Apple devices no, that work well. No, you should upgrade well. instead, Apple says. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and so I have been battling, I've been like so determined to not just buy a new iPad and give them more money just so that I have a teleprompter device. Um, I've been trying to, to battle getting it working and I have completely lost that battle, but I'm still not going to buy a new iPad. Yeah. Um, so all of the iterations that I've gone through, I tried to um, get an app installed that would be able to be a teleprompter and they all just require a later version of, uh, of iOS. And then I finally found one that I can use that, that runs on the iPad, but all of the integrations to get like scripts into it require you to have those other apps installed. So like you can put a script in Dropbox, for example, but then you need the latest version of the Dropbox app and the iPad yeah. can't run that. Or you need oh. Google Drive <laughs> and the iPad can't run that. So it's like, I finally got it to a point where I could, um, I, I had like it showing a teleprompted script, but now I can't get the scripts yep. into it. So I got super frustrated and decided that um, I would just use one of my screens. And so now <laughs> I have... A, a teleprompter app on my computer that um, can mirror the, the the script nicely and yep. flip it around so that so that it can be used um, in in the teleprompter um, setup. But it means that I have to like move my screen, like because my my screen's on like a pivoting arm. I have to yep. pivot it and move it in underneath the teleprompter. Because if you, if you don't know, it has like a reflective piece of glass. So if you if you place something at a uh, ninety degree angle from um, from the camera, then you can um, you can see it in the teleprompter, which sits in front of the lens of the camera. So it looks like you're looking into the camera um, while you're reading a script. Yeah, um, I can't even see the... I'm looking at the lens, but I can't see the lens because there's that... 45 degree angle glass and the camera is in the black pouch so it's dark in there so it means the if all the light just bounces off and it's like a mirror so i'm literally looking at a, a ipad screen here but the lens like if i keep going I'll, i don't want to touch the screen because then you'll have a fingerprint <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah now i have this super ghetto setup again like i bought a new teleprompter but now i have a super ghetto setup where i have to like pivot my screen and move it in underneath um, that mirror yeah. and then rearrange the window so that it's only that big on my screen uh, and then reverse it so that it, it can be read as a teleprompter script. And, oh man, I, it took me hours and hours and hours. But now I have a teleprompter and it is a game changer in terms of like being able to record those videos quickly. Like I said at the start, it was like I was weighing up between those two things of like, um, you know, having a high quality recording, but it taking a long time to get it or having a slightly lower quality recording that I can get quickly. Uh, being able to have a teleprompter that I can just read from, like, yeah, it, it meant that I could get both of those things. I could have the high quality recording, but at the amount of time that it would take yeah. me to, to do it reading from a script. So very cool, very good suggestion. Uh, and that's I agree. what I've it been sinking hours into. <laughs> it doesn't take long to justify the cost of a teleprompter and it's not that expensive i mean if you get the, the good monitor and all the, the setup it might go up but i had the same experience i bought it and i was like oh i don't know if i'm going to use it because the it takes a little bit of adjustment to to be natural while reading text and you, you have to make the text window kind of where the lens is maybe just a bit higher and not too wide because 
if it's too wide, you'll still see the eye. I don't know if you see my eye change, but if I go from left to right, it, it, you still see a little bit of... So you kind of want to... Uh, the least uh, eye tracking movement you get, the more it looks like you're natural. And it's it's quite easy. The, someone doing a first recording with a teleprompter, they will not sound natural. They'll just sound like they're in reading mode. Like they just take the reading voice and uh, it's just trying to stay, uh, move your hands and just try to stay natural. It takes a little bit of adjustment. But once you get past that, I had the same um, experience. I had this video to prepare within this pretty tight deadline. And I was like, either I wing it, but uh, it's, uh, it's going to take 20 takes to, to remember what I have to say. Or I look to the side, but it's kind of, uh, and then I have to edit to make it really nice. And I did all these takes in about 15 minutes, which I'm sure would have been at least two hours. And I was like, I value my time. Like the 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 the, the teleprompter was a couple of hundred bucks. And I was like two hours of, like I could easily charge someone to that price for doing a quick uh, website. Uh, and instead I just bought that thing and now it's going to continue uh, buying me money. But I love what you said about the, um, I think in the last episode we talked about the upgrade of one past episode we talked about upgrade path for like improving your setup and one thing we both both mentioned is don't get too much thing right at once because every little piece of equipment you get shambles everything like it, it just you have to restructure everything and you you demonstrated that you, you get this piece of equipment which has one purpose but now you're like ah oh, I need to move this thing here and I still have that problem when when we do the podcast so I can be in the middle I have to kind of turn it and I used to I I literally took the the mounts and rejig the entire desk to try to have something that works for both and now I, I have something I can leave in place but just adding this one piece of equipment means you suddenly have to revisit your entire uh, rig from 2 years in the making <laughs> and that yeah, that's keeps happening was... yeah I was literally like considering moving the whole orientation of the room oh, yeah. to, to make the teleprompter work. Like, yeah, just adding that one piece has, has thrown everything else out. So Yeah, I had my uh, camera on the left side of the screen and then I wanted it on the right because reasons. I don't even, maybe the cable length or whatever. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, that means the desk needs to go against the back wall. So I have more depth of feel. And it's just like, before mm -hmm. you know, you've pulled everything out and starts to like, like reset an office from scratch and oh, I'm going to wipe the desk and clean everything because <laughs> there's nothing on it. And it, yeah, it's, it's a rabbit hole. Awesome. Well, thank you once again for tuning in. Uh, my name is John Myers. You can find me over at John Myers underscore IO on Twitter. And I am a Simon Swiss, Simon Vrashliotis. I like that people start to realize my last name is not too scary. You, you probably heard more about it uh, in the, my backstory when we do that episode. Until then, thank you so much for listening. It's been a pleasure. I've survived on a few hours of sleep thanks to John's high energy entertainment. I've learned a lot about uh, edge computing. And yeah, this was pretty exciting. I hope you enjoyed when it comes out and listening in your ears or enjoyed the live stream for the three people currently now live. Thanks for watching. It's been fun and we will see you next time. See ya. Bye bye. Yes. Oh, this, the live stream people are still with us. Now you yeah, get yeah. to see the, the post stream stuff. Yeah, when we just start <laughs> ranting about everything. And... <laughs> yeah. no, 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 this is still going out. It's still going to be available on YouTube. Don't, think... don't start talking trash about it. <laughs> I, I can see a little thing saying three people. I don't know. I don't know if it means live. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, no, it's the views. It's the views. It's me who clicked three times on the. I don't know. <laughs> it's just Simon. Three versions of Simon. That's fine. Yeah, no, it says three <laughs> on YouTube. It says three watching now. Right. Oh, there you go. Uh, it's great. Well, like I hope it. you enjoyed it. Yeah, the, we, the we don't do this. Live. We're not trying to... Actually, actually, at the start, I was trying to turn this into a live show, but John pretty smartly said it's, it's a lot of <laughs> like overhead like to, to create the production. I had like scenes for the intro, outro, and like... Uh, but it's it's kind of cool to just make it public that we're recording. Uh, and I suspect uh, a lot of people in Australia or our time zone get to enjoy to watch something like this during lunch break or early lunch break instead of us always trying to tune in at three in the morning to see <laughs> most of the action. So, yeah, it's kind of nice to make it public. It also forces us a little bit, just a little bit to be stay clean and <laughs> try to not derive too much. I, I think it's... In terms of production 
productivity, there'll be uh, sometimes we can riff off and like, oh, let's just take a break now and we'll, t- <laughs> we'll try again. So yeah. it's kind of nice. I feel like this is the most consistent episode that we've recorded, like without big chunks we need to edit out. Like we probably only yeah. need to edit out one piece from from the middle. So uh, yeah. yeah, thanks for putting the extra pressure on live thanks. people. Thanks, yeah, you three. <laughs> I know this, I don't know if Cody is still there. Cody and Philip, uh, I'll just put Philip on the screen as well. Uh, to say good day. I mean, he said good day two days, two hours ago, but hi. <laughs> uh, and that's it. Yeah, we had a few comments. That's the only two people that commented. Oh, there's a third one, and it is us. Ah. But it's nice. Yeah, we. I can. I can see this thing going to when we go live. If there's a, like a really interesting comment with a question, like just we can. This is, it's live, which means we have the opportunity to say, "Oh, that's that's a really interesting point. I didn't think of mentioning," and then we can branch off of that. For sure. All right. right, Awesome. Thank you for joining us, live streamers. We're going to go now. We are going to go. It's been fun, as always. John, you rock. Uh, You rock, Simon. You rock, Philip. You rock, Cody. I'm going to do a little puppy feed because it's uh, 12 o'clock in 10 minutes. And I'm surprised she hasn't been like usually she. Oh, I can do I can do one thing. Let me go back to if anyone is still live. I have to do this. Oh, hopefully not drop her. So tiny. <laughs> oh, look at that little baby. Ah, oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. Oh, you can see she fits in one hand. Oh. You have to keep her, Simon. She oh. has like sh- she's only alive because of you. You've it, given her the gift of life. That's one thing you you hear people having their first child. They always like human child. They always say. I have this thing I'm responsible for and uh, it's like I by myself have the power to make it survive or not. <laughs> and that's yeah. exactly how I feel about it. Like, I'm so grateful I get to work from home and do my own thing and work part-time with a company that just doesn't care where you work from. Uh, because if I had to try to negotiate with my boss, oh, can I take some days off? But then you run out of days off. Or if yeah. uh, you have to find some nanny that can do and you have to trust that person to do the the right thing and the right amount so there's a lot of uh very uh surgical pres- not surgical but it's a very fine uh, yeah. w- uh distinct thing you have precise, to have the exact yeah. amount exact temperature the preciseness of this uh, is the difference between make or break you can't just say, oh, i just try drink some milk whatever i don't know how much so i'm glad i'm here and i can do this and I never felt any pressure from anyone to say, "Hey, uh, cute puppies, but dude, can you can you, can you do other stuff?" And, <laughs> and yeah. people know people who know me know that I'm actually I share a lot of that stuff, but I also do the other stuff. I do the work, I prepare my workshop, I'm recording a podcast. Like it's not like I'm just like I I am here for that puppy, but I'm I'm the sort of person that kind of live up to the expectations that are from me so i'm, I'm not just yeah. like just oh you know i'm gonna use that puppy to not do anything else for a few weeks i don't let you take no. a break I, I make you get back to work yeah actually get back john, to recording john, a podcast. that's one all my fault <laughs> i was gonna skip it and then nah all right that's a way right. well, we could we could uh do a full-time live show that'd be fun a fun way to to yeah. earn no money <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right people can just come hang out with us for the day yeah, it's, uh, we, yeah, it's it's way too easy to just hang out and chat with you, Simon. It's yeah. hard to get things done. <laughs> well, if the podcast goes incredibly well, eventually this could be a thing that we can. We enjoy could just hang out full and... time. You could do five five days a week, five eight hour podcasts a week. Do you want us to put your comment on screen? Give us five hundred dollars, <laughs> and we leave it for four seconds. That's it. Four seconds. Yeah, yeah. We could anyone sell else this airtime? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Simon, that's enough. You go <laughs> go feed a puppy and then go and get yes. some sleep. <laughs> oh, no, I got to get some work done, unfortunately, but I might sleep a bit tonight. All right, All take right. it easy. See ya. Where Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye-bye.